Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here, I've dedicated to teach you guys how to stop orange peel, or at least control the kind of orange peel that you're going to get to help you guys um, replicate the OEM finishes. Now, from my experience, no matter how good you try, unless you're painting a dead flat panel, so say if I was to paint that hood um, laid down flat, I'd be able to get that pretty flat, but um, as you're painting a panel on the side of a car or something like that, um, you're always going to have a little bit of orange peel. Um, it's always there from factory, unless you um, sort of rub it right back and polish it right up. You're always going to have a little bit, but I'm going to teach you guys, uh, you know, the best ways and the causes of orange peel, why why it happens in the first place, and how to reduce it. Um, so look, th this is just a couple of quick go to base coat I put down first. Um, you shouldn't really be getting much. Uh, orange peel in your base coat and if you are well it's going to uh, fix up in the clear coat so I'm mainly going to be focusing on HS clears here I'm going to be going through HVLP spray gun and a conventional spray gun as well I may even do another video separately on LVLP spray guns um, however they do require a thinner clear so maybe more of a medium solids clear so so I decided to leave it out of this video. Um, so I'm starting off by mixing up my uh, clear. So it's a two to one ratio. And being that it's a HS clear this, it's very thick. So when, when you stir it up, you can see it on the stick. It's, it, it takes a long time to run off the stick. Now, this clear, no matter what, it needs at least 10% reducer in it. Um, if you're going for a European style finish, which have very thick orange peels in them, but a nice wet look to it, um, you'd probably leave it at 10%. However, if you go for a more Japanese, uh, sort of American, Australian type orange peel, you might want to go for um, more even 20% reducer, something like that. So I've squared off this bonnet and I'm gonna do um, loads of different uh, settings and stuff like that. So I'm gonna do different distances, different air pressures. Uh, I hope you guys appreciate this video because it did actually take me a hell of a lot longer than most videos do to make. Um, I had to brainstorm it, I had to, it's, it's basically like doing a um, science project I guess uh, in a way. So I'm starting off with 0% thinner, conventional spray gun, 15 centimeter distance at 10 psi. Um, this was actually very hard for me to do, I just, it didn't feel right, such a far distance and such a low pressure. Um, and you'll see here that we get very terrible results um, and as we move up I'm going to show you guys the more uh, ideal uh, settings so basically 15 centimeters is way too far away and it probably couldn't hurt just to um, just get the you know tape measure out or get a ruler out and um, you know measure how the distances that you are away um, gun settings I'm using uh, basically on this gun um, full fan. I've got the fluid set to uh, four winds out and I'm leaving those settings set for the entire demonstration here. So I'm not going to be changing those gun settings at all. All I'm going to be doing is changing my distances and air pressures and thinning ratios. So for this side of the bonnet, every um, spray test that you see me do on the left hand side of the bonnet here, this is going to be with a HVLP air, gun, uh, air cap on it. So um, it is a bit of a different style of painting when you're painting HVLP. You really need to go just a little bit closer. Um, I found optimal for HVLP is 5 centimeter distance. So it is very close. Um, main reason for that is so that it doesn't atomize too thickly. Um, because there's a lot of air volume coming out of there. And that can um, tend to atomize in a very thick way. Um, compared to the conventional and LVLP spray guns. So this is a quick look at that. that that's not even closed up there. It was um, going on really terribly and orange peely here. Um, as we up the pressure here on the one a little bit higher and come in a little bit closer, it is a improvement. You can see from there to there, it's definitely an improvement there. Um, however, it's still not quite right. Um, we need to close even the conventional gun back into about... Uh, five, six centimeters I had it at actually. Um, and the HVLP, um, yeah, it's still quite thick and quite orange peely as well. All of these um, four here are all still at no reducer as well. So that's definitely not helping. 
Um, there's many uh, things that are going to um, contribute to orange peel. Um, and I'd like to go through as much of that as I can with you guys. So stuff like viscosity um, and the weather is going to greatly uh, change the viscosity of the paint. So on a warmer day, the temperature is um, of the paint is going to be warm, obviously, and the viscosity is going to be thinner. So I actually find uh, easier to paint in the warmer temperatures. Um, I'm happy painting even at 35 degrees. It dries the paint nice and quick. You can smash it on and it's more likely to stay where you put it and less chance of getting runs as well. So um, yeah, when you do have um, too much fluid on there, you'll, you'll get orange peel and runs as well. So don't forget that those gun settings are quite important. So if you just decide that you want to leave that fluid uh, setting on the spray gun, wide open the whole time and you're wondering why you're trying to do everything else right but yeah just gun settings are very important viscosity is important and uh distances and overlap and all that kind of stuff so you're always running about 75 percent overlap from each pass um i might even actually work on another video on overlap as well so um unfortunately i yeah forgot to press record on my camera for those two next ones on the left with the HVLP um, but right here this one here that you see me do now this is the optimal setting for um, the European finishes using the conventional spray gun so that was full fan again fluid at four turns out 10% reducer and six centimeters diff distance so I'll give you guys a look up at the spray outs that we've done here so this one here um, HVLP 10% reducer um, at 10 centimeters, uh, 10 psi as well. So it's still a little bit orange peely. However, the one one above it, um, we brought the uh, gun a little bit closer and got the pressure up to 20 psi, and that's our optimal setting for the European finishes. So um, th that's the kind of setting that you'd like to have. And next up, we're going to be showing you guys how to get the optimal settings for the, uh, if you're looking for a more flat finish, um, which is going to take us up to 20% reducer, and the rest of it's going to stay pretty much the same. Um, gun settings, leave them all the same, but you'll find that the paint goes on a lot flatter because of uh, the extra thinner in there as well. Um, just don't forget the reason that uh, a conventional gun needs to come back just that little bit. I know it was only one centimeter, so I had my um, HVLP at five centimeters and the conventional at six centimeters. Um, the reason being is because the um, the fan is a lot bigger of the HVLP. Now, that's actually wrong. I accidentally wrote nine centimeters there, but it was actually six centimeters. I apologize about that. So, don't let that put you off. So five centimeters for HVLP, six centimeters for conventional. I hope you guys have um, done okay following all of this. I hope I haven't confused you with, at all. Um, so top up here, we're at that 20% and this is going to give us the flatter finish. So um, yeah, if you're looking for the more sort of Japanese. However, I would recommend if you're looking for the more sort of Japanese, some of those Mazdas, most painters would know like the Mazdas got really terrible finishes on them, I'd nearly even just recommend using a medium solids clear and even using a LV LP spray gun. Um, I've got so many spray guns, I know which one's going to be able to replicate the orange peel of the specific car the right way. And I've found that the conventional is able to achieve everything, which is it's my, my personal favourite. So because it's in the middle, so you've got low volume, low pressure, and you've got high volume, low pressure, and then in, in the middle of those two, you've got the uh, conventional. So I find that it can go, um, yeah, it can spray the European styles, it can spray whatever you like, basically, um, just by you getting the settings right on it. So closing thoughts, I'll just give you guys another rehash over it. Um, there is many things that can contribute to getting orange peel and it's most likely if you are getting a bad orange peel more than one thing involved in it. So viscosity of your paint, the kind of paint you're using, gun settings and distances and even your prep work. So what's underneath can also contribute. If you're just sort of sanding something down that's already got orange peel in it and you're using a bit of scotch bright, well then it's going to be there before you even start. So you start before you start it. So I've decided to give you guys a just finish off by giving you guys a look at this MGB GT. So 
something more of an actual a bigger area that I'm actually painting so it's a bit more of a demo with the um, and this is conventional using the high solids clear so don't forget um, if you're using medium solids clear it's going to be a lot thinner so it's going to um, come out a lot quicker so you'll probably have to um, speed up a touch even or even hold that gun just a touch further back. Um, I do like to drop my pressures down when I'm painting sort of flat surfaces like you probably notice here that once I finish painting this quarter panel I'll drop that pressure down just a touch just to do that roof because I'll find that you'll get a bit more material on there and it's going to uh, flow out so reducers and even the kinds of hardeners that you use are going to also play a part in it so if you're using a uh, fast hardener in summer or something like that well then that's going to dry a lot quicker and it's um it's not going to flow out as much as some of the slower hardeners now um personally i like to stay away from slow hardeners that's just me um if it's hot enough to need a slow hardener i say it's too hot to paint because you can do a full respray i can happily do a full respray with normal hardener that's above 35 degrees uh celsius so um that's just my way of painting anyway some other people I know they like to use slow hardeners, but um, yeah, I did use it in this job here, and uh, I don't really like it. There was one or two little spots where I actually got a couple of runs. I'm not going to tell you where they are. So there you go. This job ended up quite nice. It was uh, for a customer of ours, Sunset uh, Sunset Pearl. It was called. It was the color off a TDR Tuscan, and uh, yeah, it came up quite nice. MGB GT is the model of the car. I might do a full set of videos on this when I finally get the chance. As I mentioned before, I'm a very busy man, and uh, this video did take me a long time, so I hope you guys appreciate it. Give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you check out uh, that video that I've got on viscosity. I'll put a card in this video for it. Otherwise, check out this video here on the right. That's going to give you an idea of which spray guns you'll be uh, best off buying. And there's also another paint review here on the left, which is a Standox paint review. So, thanks for watching, and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.